So with your permission, I'll uh, start with a little story uh, about myself, actually. So uh, I happen to be a proud father of a four-year-old boy. His name is Eitan. Uh, so for those of us who are parents, uh, how often and how many times do we wake up in the middle of the night where a child is complaining about uh, an earache, um, sometimes coughing his guts out and we don't know what that is, uh, having a fever, we don't know how serious the condition is. We don't know what to do in many cases. And uh, the choices we have in front of us, or at least uh, as far as myself uh, would go, I can call the pediatrician. And uh, typically, I will get to uh, the nurse at best, uh, or maybe their answering service. And the nurse will tell me, you know, don't come in the next day to the office unless the child has a fever for more than a couple of days. And then maybe you can come into the office. Of course, I can go to the ER uh, if I'm uh, panicking. Uh, or I can call uh, the number that I have in the back of my insurance card, which is our 1-800-DOCTOR, uh, the telemedicine service that our insurer would offer. Uh, not all of these are optimal cases. Uh, in, the case of the tele in the case of the telemedicine uh, provider, uh, I don't really know which doctor I'm speaking with. In the case of a nurse, I'm not really speaking to a doctor. Uh, and in this case, I'll uh, cancel all my meetings the following morning. I'll have to call in and say that I'm not coming to work, or at least uh, the first half of the day, and I will take my kid to a physician to do an exam, and in many, many cases, they'll send me back home and uh, say that there's nothing serious uh, that's going on with the child. So in order to address this scenario, uh, Taito Care was founded, and it was founded in uh, 2012 with a vision of uh, taking care out of the traditional clinical setting and pushing it to the homes of a consumer. And so what Taito Care came up with is a little slick device uh, that should be present in uh, every medicine cabinet at the home. So this is how it looks like, and we'll show some bigger picture in, uh, pictures in a second. And what this does is essentially allows um, the physician, so your pediatrician uh, or even the telemedicine physician, to fully replicate a physical exam, uh, but without the doctor and the patient being in the same room together. Uh, and so now, on top of uh, having a simple video conversation and asking my child to cough into my iPhone, uh, they can actually listen uh, to their hearts and lung sounds, they can look into their ear, they can look into their throat, and essentially uh, completely revolutionize and enhance the abilities they currently have with a simple video or a phone call uh, with the, uh, the ability to do a full physical exam. Taito is uh, FDA cleared uh, in the US, uh, and since then, we, uh, since 2016, when we launched the product, uh, we expanded to, uh, uh, globally to other countries as well. Uh, we um, just received CE marking and are active in Europe. Uh, we're active north of the border in Canada, starting operations in South America and in China as well. We did not invent telemedicine, so telemedicine is out there. Uh, it's a booming market. Uh, the adoption is growing uh, on a daily basis. The adoption is growing on a daily basis, uh, but it, it's still not there. So the services are available to the majority of the population in this country, uh, you know, roughly 85%. Uh, but we know from market data that the utilization is really, really low. So even if the service is there and available, people are not using it. And there is a variety of reasons why that's so. The main reason, and that's from my personal experience, is trust. So I am not sure I would trust a physician to diagnose my child or even myself uh, over a video conversation. Um, the doctors themselves, in many cases, wouldn't trust their own ability to diagnose over a phone or a video conversation. And then it's just the brand, right? So uh, if I have a physician that I know, a pediatrician that I know, I would much rather call them as opposed to a doctor I've never spoken with before and I don't even know who they are. So these are some of the barriers to the adoption. And this is what Taito is trying to, uh, to, to essentially um, overcome. Uh, and since 2016, uh, as we uh, were released here in the US, uh, we had great adoption here in this country and, uh, and elsewhere as well. We're seeing exponential utilization numbers, uh, so roughly uh, you know, the, the 45, 50%, uh, what that means you know, compared to the five on the previous slide. So what that means essentially is everybody that has a device is actually using a device. Uh, the device itself has uh, several components, uh, and through these components and attachments, uh, you're able to examine uh, your own or your uh, child's lungs, uh, the throat, 
uh, with an exam camera, um, do a full ear exam with a stethoscope and a heart exam, uh, so an ear exam with an otoscope and a heart exam with a stethoscope. Uh, now, there is a variety of great devices out there, great stethoscopes, great otoscopes that are out there. I think what Taito Care was able to do successfully is consumerize the technology. So placing these complex devices in the hand of the consumers and together with um, you know, the device and coupled with the Taito technology essentially allow a lay user that has zero clinical experience to conduct a complex set of diagnostic exams at the home. The device can operate in a few modes. Uh, one is a traditional live mode, uh, as in there is a physician uh, on the other side of the video chat, and now as opposed to having just a video conversation, uh, they can actually extend uh, their diagnostic capabilities with all of these diagnostic exams that are available. Uh, but in addition, they can also do what we call an examine forward mode, and this is where there is no physician present, and uh, the platform uh, and our app essentially would guide the mother or the patient themselves through conducting all of these exams on themselves without an assistance of a physician. And in this case, uh, you know, if we take our uh, uh, example of me waking up at four o'clock in the morning, we'll be able to um, do the exam on our child, submit it to our physician. The physician can come in in the morning, review the data, prescribe, uh, or decide they can do a follow-up um, uh, visit uh, and do all of this on the basis of the data that we collected overnight. Our platform also integrates with um, existing um, IT ecosystem that's typically present uh, in any hospital or uh, a provider setting. Um, so um, you know, we are agnostic to the platform that the physician is using and can fully integrate with an existing workflow of the physician. And as far as what the device can diagnose, uh, or rather what can be diagnosed with the help of the device, I think it's uh, somewhat self-explanatory. So anything from a throat condition to an ear condition uh, to acute uh, upper respiratory conditions and chronic upper respiratory conditions and uh, skin care uh, or dermatolo dermatology conditions through the exam camera. So this is a quick comparison. Again, uh, nothing surprising here. Um, you know, Everything on top of the simple video capabilities, so all of these uh, uh, diagnostic capabilities are available through the different attachments that are present with the device. And what I'd like to do now is just to give you a quick overview of how our guidance uh, and exams are conducted um, through a video is the mother uh, uh, conducting the exam by herself without a physician present. So a very, relatively very complex exam. Uh, she'll need to examine the ear of a child with, a, with an otoscope. The platform would actually guide her through the ear canal. And as soon as the, um, the device reaches a perfect image of an eardrum, the device will let her know uh, with a green circle uh, and vocally uh, uh, would say that the exam is complete. So this type of guidance is available for every single exam, allowing essentially every lay user to conduct a very complex uh, exam uh, in the home setting. So this is another exam, uh, example of a throat exam. You know, similar concepts of uh, the mother being able um, to conduct an exam uh, guided by the platform. And as soon as the algorithms recognize the back of the throat and a perfect image of the back of, uh, of the throat that would allow the physician to diagnose, uh, the platform will let the mother know. Um, uh, and, uh, um, and she can capture that image. Again, the same capabilities are available for adults as well if you're conducting the exams on yourself. And uh, last uh, example is the traditional live exam where there is a physician and uh, a patient online. Uh, so, so this is what you're seeing right now is our physician platform. So there is a physician speaking with uh, the patient, uh, but again, as, as opposed to a traditional telemedicine visit where there's just a video feed, right now the physician also has the device feed. The device guides the patients through where to place the device and how to conduct the exams. Now the physician can actually listen to the patient's heart, listen to the patient's lungs, look into her throat, look into her ear, uh, and they can exponentially enhance their ability to diagnose uh, with all of the data that comes out of the device. And uh, lastly, you know, what, what you've seen up until now is our home use cases. So the device is present in uh, a consumer's home, uh, whether with the parents or uh, people, uh, adults uh, that would like to uh, not go to a physician and remain at home. 
Um, we also have professional versions of the device, so this is a clinician-to-clinician -clinician scenario where you can have a visiting nurse taking our Taito Pro device and going for home visits or Taito Clinic that's typically placed at schools, at community centers, at remote work locations and essentially enhances the reach um, and provides access to care for patients that uh, don't typically have access to care. My name is John Gannon. I'm the CEO of Blue Spark Technologies. While the presentation's coming up, I'd like to thank Living in Digital Times for your commitment to digital health and baby tech uh, and, the and the opportunity to be here today. Thank you. So our flagship product is TempTrack. TempTrack is a continuous temperature monitor. It's an FDA cleared device and it is also CE marked in Europe. So a little bit about the device. It's a wireless continuous temperature monitor. It comes in the form of a soft patch. You peel and stick the patch under the child's arm in a home setting. It takes a temperature read every 10 seconds, stores that data onto the patch, and then communicates it out to a smart device. So some of the key features of TempTrack are uh, each device is unique. That's important because it allows for the association of the patch directly to a specific child in the home or a patient in a clinical setting. Uh, it is a continuous temperature reading, so every 10 seconds it's taking a read and it's communicating that. In a home setting, it will communicate it about 40 feet out to a smart device. It's also storing that data and allows for the parent to set alert levels. So if your child is sleeping and you don't want to have to wake them up in the middle of the night, you can set an alert level when the temperature rises above that alert level you're, you will get both an audible and a visual alert on your smart device, so you'll know something's taking place. You don't have to go into the room to wake them up. If anybody has had a sick sleeping child, you know it's pretty difficult to get them back to sleep. Uh, and the benefit here is you don't have to wake them up to take that temperature. Uh, so the brand equity for a product like, like ours, TempTrack, is peace of mind for the parent. Uh, the parent knows that the child's being monitored and let them rest. You don't have to wake the child up in order to take their temperature when they're sleeping. So one of the great features of TempTrack, in addition to the ones I've mentioned, is TempTrack Connect. So TempTrack Connect is a new part of our offering, and it's a cloud-based infrastructure that allows for remote monitoring of the patient. So say, for example, you're a mom or dad who has a child at home who's sick with a caregiver, and you need to go to work, but you'd still like to be able to see that data on a real-time basis. What you can do is, through an email, you can send the, an invitation directly to your own app, which will allow you then to remotely be able to monitor your child's temperature. So in addition to the patch, we also have both an iOS and an Android app. These are free downloadable apps. Some of the key features you can see are in the circle, you're getting a real-time temperature. So every 10 seconds, that will update and give you the real-time temperature. Around that circle is a countdown clock. So it tells you how much time is remaining on the patch itself until, until it runs out. Uh, you get both the alert level that you set as the user, and in addition to that, when the temperature rises above 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the theoretical fever level, you're going to get an, uh, a color change alert. So the, the, for example, in this case, the color goes orange. That indicates you're in the fever range. And then if it goes above your alert level, then it turns red. And you can see that also in a graphical depiction. So FD, uh, we are an FDA clear device. We got our FDA clearance in September of 2015. We got our CE mark uh, to be able to sell in Europe from a regulatory standpoint in September of last year. Uh, it has been tested for safety, accuracy, biocompatibility. Uh, and it is an all-ages device. Uh, this device is being used in hospitals on adult patients, as well as in home setting and hospitals on children. Uh, so this gives you, a, a, again, the view that you would get from our app. A couple of the other features, in addition to the graphical representation, it allows you to put notes in. So in the event that your child takes medicine, has a bath, eats, you might want to understand what is happening with the child outside of their fever relative to the trend, and it, be, it becomes annotated then on the graph itself. 
and also we have a tabular version of the history. That history then can be sent to a caregiver or another family member. The flow that you would see on the left side, you see the tabular version, and that's the information that can be sent out to, a, as I mentioned, a caregiver. The alert, when the temperature rises above your user set alert level, uh, you're going to get an alarm on your phone to let you know that the temperature is rising. One of the great features of TempTrack is it's not, we, we are sending a Bluetooth signal, but we are not pairing specifically with the device. And what that means is you can have one mobile device and be monitoring multiple children. So if you have two or three sick kids in a home, you can still, with one single device, be able to monitor all of the children. So we're using Bluetooth and advertising mode to be able to do that. Uh, and then you see an example of the notes on the end, and this is when they've been fed, bathed, when, when they get medicine, and then you can see what the trend of the temperature is from that point. Uh, I'd like to spend a minute talking about what we're doing in the clinical area because I think it's important relative to understanding that this is a clinically tested device and is something that is being used in hospitals today. Uh, the only vital sign in hospitals that is not continuously measured or outside the intensive care unit is temperature. Uh, for pulse ox, they have a clip on your finger. For blood pressure, you have a cuff. That data is sent to a central monitoring station, but temperature is not. Temperature, they wake you up every four or six hours and take a temperature. A device like TempTrack solves this problem. So we have been clinically tested for safety, tolerability, and accuracy in a clinical setting. We've completed three clinical trials with the product. Uh, one of our clinical trials was at the Cleveland Clinic in the intensive care unit. This was a gold standard test where they were comparing TempTrack to a pulmonary artery catheter for core temperature agreement. And the concluding statement was that TempTrack temp -track was in agreement with a pulmonary artery catheter. They presented those findings at the Society of Critical Care Medicine in February of last year. Our longest study was with University Hospital's Seidman Cancer Center. Uh, this was about a 6,000 hour on patient continuous study. These were long stay patients, uh, high dose chemotherapy and bone marrow transplant patients. And they were looking for a few things. Was it safe and tolerable when worn continuously for up to 30 days? Uh, was it accurate when compared to their standard of care measurements? And could they identify fevers earlier than, than with standard of care? All three, they found that they were able to do. It was safe and tolerable. It was accurate. And interestingly, they were able to identify first onset of neutropenic fever using TempTrack a median of 11 hours sooner than using their standard of care, which is actually a pretty remarkable outcome. Uh, we have also been tested on children in the clinical setting. Cincinnati Children's Hospital tested this on oncology patients. Again, they were looking for early detection of fever, and they found that there were several instances where they were able to find fevers using TempTrack over 12 hours earlier than with standard of care. So it has been tested uh, in the clinical setting. It is being adopted by several of the th groups who have both tested it and new hospital systems. Uh, so the, the offering that we do have in the clinical market has the same accuracy, it's the same device effectively that we're selling into intensive care units and oncology wards of, of major hospitals. So today you can purchase TempTrack at CVS, Target, Amazon. Uh, it's available in both a 24 and a 48 hour device. Uh, this is the packaging that you'll find. This is our 48 hour packaging. Uh, and as I mentioned, the app then is a free downloadable app. So thank you very much for your time today. Yeah. So, hi, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hosni. I will be introducing Comper Healthcare. So, we are founded in 2014 in Silicon Valley, and now, we are, and since three years, we move it to Beijing. So, now we are located there as our business headquarters as well as our manufacturing there. Uh, we launched several different products in the past three years, and I would like to introduce the product one by one. So, here is like uh, how the system it works. We have like several Comper products depend on the function and which kind of data they are collecting. Then it passes through our system and via our app. Then we can analyze it and we give you the result. It's different case of products. So the first one, it's our Comper Smart Fertility Tracker, which is a basal body temperature thermometer, thermometer, this one, that it's able to record the basal body temperature to predict the ovulation, uh, exactly the ovulation window for the women trying to get pregnant. It includes a charging box as well when you, ch when you just close the box and you put it in charge, it includes a UV disinfection system 
which you don't need exactly to wash it or to care about about like washing the device. This is the device. One. Yeah. The next device it's a Comper Smart Doppler Fetal Monitor. This device it's able to record the fetal heartbeat and analyze it. There is a, a light on the device that will show you if there is any abnormal activity in the fetal heart uh, heart rate, and then give you an advice. But the most common advice, of course, because it's pregnancy, so it's to see a doctor. This is the device. It gives the real real time sound, so it's not like an electronic sound based on what they recorded. There is, of course, the ability of sharing the uh, the whole recording audio files. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is our uh, smart weight scale. It's a simple scale. The only difference comparing with the existing one that this one, it's made for pregnant women. So there is the option that you can wait yourself as well you can wait, there is the option to wait with the baby. The difference as well in the design, because the design we made it for anti-slippery, so it's much more safety for the w pregnant women and elder as well. Yeah. This is uh, that we launched it in 2018. It's a Comper Smart Forehead Thermometer. It's a forehead thermometer able to record up to 32 result and give the result within one second. So you just like have to get one click and it will give you the result immediately. With the 32 result recorded in the device, once you connect it with the app, it will synchronize automatically and give you analysis. This one also, it can be used by professional because we are offered an, uh, exactly unlimited number of users. So it can be used by professional doctors as well as teachers in school. Yeah, this is just briefly idea about the design as we are as well the, uh, the designer of all those product. So this is the fertility tracker. Here is about the Doppler fetal monitor. Here for the, uh, for the smart scale that we just introduced it. And this is the forehead thermometer. During CES, actually, we, uh, we launched a new product. It's not a baby tech product, but it's uh, related with women. So this is our latest innovation. We launched it exactly about three weeks ago. It's uh, called Comper Smarkin. It's the, uh, it's the first smart skincare device. I will back for it in the next page. <laughs> So this is exactly our app. It includes like the basal body temperature. It includes some skincare function here. As well, it has the fetal heart rate and the fit for birth. The fit for birth, like with cooperation with them, uh, the app offers some exclusive exercise for the pregnant women. Uh, next one. Yeah, this is Smarkin. So it's the only existing device that combines radio frequency EMS, LED, and the micro vibration together. This device is able to test the skin via the app, and based on your skin type, you can exactly get the, uh, the tick that you needed to treat your skin. Here's briefly uh, this one that we launched during CES to the public. Thank you so much for your attention. For any more information, we are on the booth just here. Thanks a lot.